Hey, you all. It's us again, and we're so happy to have you here. I do want to let you know, this we're, has been pre-recorded. Yeah, we're not really here. We're not really here. but okay. And Marty is, at this time, uh, having her procedure. And so we just are praying that everything goes well. This is actually a cutout. She's just a card for it. <laughs> but no, we are pre-recording so you can, so we could uh, post on this day, our Tuesdays at, at one. And we're going to do a chicken cacciatore. So we're going to open with a song. But first I want to thank Bethel for uh, hosting us and being the ones that uh, let us do this great show and share with you all. Well, so. also, and remind them, you can chat with Pastor Karen because she will be watching along with you all. And she'll be making comments so you can answer because otherwise she's going to be so lonely without me here. I will. I will. I know. Just don't cry. So, I, I, will, I will be commenting. I'll watch it as you all are watching it, and we can still make comments. This is what Marty tells me. So, we're going we're gonna to do that. So, again... Thanks for joining us, and are you ready to sing? I'm ready. One, two, three. Here's a story that must be told about two ladies that are kind of old. One's a pastor, the other's not. They like to chat, cook, and pray a lot. Oh, oh, chat, cook, and pray. Oh, 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 chat, cook, and pray. Oh, 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 chat, cook, and pray. Oh, 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 chat, cook, pray. There's, There's lots, lots of laughter laugh. and lots of fun. Tuesdays, Tuesdays on Facebook Live at 1. You'll never, never know what will happen when Lucy and Ethel are at it again. Oh, chat, cook, and pray. Oh, oh, oh chat, cook, and pray. Oh, 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 chat, cook, and pray. Oh, 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 chat, cook, pray. Amen. Okay, she's Whoa. ready to show you how to make chicken cacciatore, and I'm going to give you a little background on this special dish. And so. actually, just stand right there, and, oh. and but that way they can, you know, because we've got our bigger viewing area today after uh, That's last right. Tuesday's experience. Up and down. And, of course, um, we that ending was quite entertaining when we yes. couldn't figure out how to stop the Well, you filming. know, there's... I can't help it that they change where this stuff looks, and I still don't know now, how we got it Now, are you off. sure I'm not going to be in the way? You're not going to be in the way. Uh, okay, how so are, are we both in the picture? Yes. You're sure? Okay. All I'm right. Sure. Now, so I will stand here while you uh, start this and tell them what to do, and then I'll read. Okay, we're going to start off. I have already uh, taken these. I use chicken tenders, and I've already cut them to the right size and all of that good stuff. And I decided to fix a little bit more than I planned on because I didn't want to have anything left over. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start with salt and peppering our little dudes. And we'll just sprinkle them with some salt and with some pepper. She's so talented. Oh yes, our She even though. sprinkles. Sprinkles so talentedly, like a, yes, like a talent. like a chef. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I need to get all of these done. And one thing I'm going to do a little different, and that is, I'm going to be using Wonder of Flour to dredge them in because when I was doing all of the looking up about chicken cacciatore, that was one of the things that one of the people, oops, people said was using Wonder Flour. Now I don't Wonder, know. This is W O N D E R. Wondra. Oh, Wondra. Wondra and this flour. Is, and this is very fine flour. And oh, and I should point out, these are, you know, I'm, I get round up into different things. Anyway, these are from uh, Pampered Chef, and they're just perfect. There's a third one if you're you doing an egg wash or something oh, like okay. that. Oh, okay. So you just go doop, doop, doop. Do, yeah. And so it's wonderful. So what I did was I, oh. I'm going to start this. I ought to put the oil in the skillet and turn it on. Yeah, that always helps too. There we go. Oh, well, right. it's just so odd being on this side yes. and not showing you the corners of my paper. Well, I know now they can see the whole piece. <coughs> they probably thought you had that all memorized anyway. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so now I'm just going to take and dredge. dredge these little dudes. You dredge each one individually? Yes, you do. See, here's the difference. If that I know, was me. I know you, and that's I would why, be putting in four, five, six at a time. And it said to don't do that. It said because you wanted them coated evenly. They stress oh, the that. The oil's not hot enough. Mm, well, it's getting there. Oh, I can't. I do see that I didn't turn it hot enough. No. Oh. Well, we'll just dredge a little bit here, set them to the side. That gives me time to. But the this one is this finer flower is uh, coating these much nicer than the ones I than did. The clunky flower. Yeah, the clunky flower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it, and it, another thing it does is a very thin layer. Yes, and that's what you want. Now, luckily, the flower, I don't know what flower I used. I found it. I found it in a bottle. Oh, well, good. And, but it was very, it was fine, but not as fine as this, but it was finer than regular flower. It almost looked like cake flour. So hard telling. Well, this is a process, you all. Yes. She, so when you do it at home, if you want to, if you want to do it like Marty, you can go ahead. If you want to do it like I would do it. And have would. it turn out crappy. Now, that's not true. And let's watch our language. Uh, I would I just throw them in there and it cover said, them up. It said, do not crowd them in the skillet. It stresses. Well, that's them. in the skillet. Well, yes, but they said you coat them evenly. If you dump them all in there, trust me, you can't coat them evenly. Besides, you can't put See, them all these in are two, <laughs> These are your, your two <laughs> fun people <laughs> having a disagreement. <laughs> having a, an intelligent discussion. A, yes, a discussion. A discussion. A, a discernment on how to flower you know, chicken it's like, tenders. It's like, do I tell you how to preach your sermons on Sunday morning? You I mean, try. I, I, you try. <laughs> but it doesn't work. It doesn't does. work. It okay. doesn't work. Very good. I yeah. really like this wonder flower. Yeah, I've never heard of it. Oh, really? I use it all the time. It's really great if for a thickening of a gravy because it doesn't lump up. So huh. you don't get lumped Oh, up. now that would be, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. So she's got several little of these little bite-sized tenders. Yes. And what gets fun is when you now have do to you want to do them like that or do you you don't keep them in the long tender no it thing? said it said to cut them in the one and a half inch oh okay or like but what i did was i pulled the little tendon things out you know how it's got that little tendon thing in there yeah. it's kind of a little tough well i cut all of those out okay which then made them a little different size too but this is i Randy really liked this recipe. Of course, there's not much that he doesn't like. I was going like. to say, usually Randy does like the recipes. Yeah, he does. I mean. And if if we were live, like we normally would, he would have already been putting up there. It was a great recipe. I loved it. Yes. Yes, he's uh, benefited greatly from this show. Yes. Unfortunately, he has I benefited greatly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure his doctor will tell him you have benefited too much. Too much from the chat cook fray. Now I'll need to wait a little bit here to put these last ones in because I know from when I start flipping them over. Yeah. So these are going to have to fry a while, right? I should yeah. have been reading. Well, you can start reading now because since okay. I've got the basic okay. thing done here. Piccata describes meat, usually veal or chicken. That is, oh, so this is chicken piccata. Yes. Okay. Can I tell you cacciatore? Yes. Well, I'm really screwed up. Okay, so this is not chicken cacciatore. Well, I this can't even read. This is chicken piccata uh, that is sliced, dredged in flour, browned, and then served in a sauce containing lemon juice, butter, and capers. Uh, piccata is an Italian word. We've been using a lot of Italian words lately. Uh, the culinary use of the Italian term means to be pounded flat. When used in reference to a way of preparing food, particularly meat or fish, it means sliced, sauteed, served in a sauce containing lemon, butter, and spices. Uh, traditionally, the Italians use veal, veal piccata. However, the best known dish of this sort in the United States uses chicken, chicken piccata. 
So we are going to have chicken piccata today. Yes. Okay, so this is usually a chicken breast that's butterflied, but as you saw, Marty's using uh, tenders well, well, that I, she's cut yeah, into. I went to Aldi's. They had the thin sliced chicken breast that I needed, and I went there to get them, and they'd already sold all of them out. Okay. So I thought, well, the tenders will work. The tenders will work. You try to flatten them to an even thickness, well, and it tells you how. Use wax paper and beat on the paper or something. Uh, and then it is seasoned and dredged in the flour, being browned in butter or olive oil. Marty used olive oil. Uh, the sauce is made using pan drippings, and she'll do that later. In the United States, it is usually served with a vegetable or a starch, such as pasta, polenta, or rice. In Italy, veal piccata is a secondo, and would be served after the pasta or other starch course. San Francisco chef and cookbook author <coughs> Carlo Mendione admits that the origin of the dish remains vague. It's not a dish easily found in authentic eating places in Italy and is seldom in people's homes. Suzette Gresham, chef owner of Aquarello in San Francisco, says that the origin of veal piccata is difficult to pin down because lemon and butter make a classic Italian sauce that can have different names in different regions. It's easier to define in culinary terms. The Dictionary of Italian Wine and Food and the Food Lover's Companion, piccata is defined as a thin escalope of veal. Lemon juice is not even mentioned. However, when the words veal or chicken are added in front of piccata, it becomes a classic Italian, or is it Italian-American dish with lemon broth or wine and butter. Capers, chopped Italian parsley, shallots, and garlic are other common additions. As interesting as piccata's pedigree may be, it, in its, its culinary, culinary versatility that resonates more with Bay Area chefs in San Francisco. Hmm. And they make something called skate piccata, which is a fish, and they, it's browned in butter, and, and they substitute pickled young grapes for capers. Uh, so they have all kinds of ways to fix piccata. But what we need to know about piccata is it's a very simple, light dish, often referred to as of the moment because it takes only a few ingredients and goes together quickly. Um, Ryan Scott, who is a chef and owner of Ryan Scott To Go, spent weeks preparing for his segment on Top Chef by studying difficult, complex dishes. After flying all night when he was asked to prepare his interpretation of piccata, his brain went blank, and the judges were not impressed with his heavily battered chicken napped with a sauce that included tomatoes. He laughingly told me that for over a year, people called him chicken piccata. On the upside, he has received hundreds of terrific piccata recipes from viewers. It is so simple to make piccata, and it, we're showing you how simple it is today as she turns the, the, the hardest part the piccata. Is, is browning the chicken. Right, browning the chicken. Uh, it's suggested using instant flour such as Wondra, which Marty did, because it seals the meat more evenly and guarantees a smooth sauce. The floured meat or fish is sauteed quickly, it says, in butter or oil and removed from the pan. And then you use the drippings for the sauce. I never thought of piccata as a practical dish for entertaining because you can only saute a few thin slices in the skillet at a time. But Elizabeth Binder, executive chef of Bar Bambino, has come up with a great solution. She makes a classic piccata sauce in a skillet and serves it over grilled pork or veal chops, which she brushes lightly with olive oil and sprinkles with coarse salt. So you see, you can do all kinds of things. And Marty is presently uh, continuing to fry the, the chicken because it takes a while. It's it's coming along. It's coming along. You've even got more to put in there. So I'm going to leave you with your chicken and you entertain us. Oh, I entertain you. Well, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Well, today we've been quite busy. We changed the church sign. Yes. Which is good because we're coming up on Pentecost on the 23rd, which is 
well, I have to remember, we're doing this for next week, so it is... Yes. This week. It's this week. It's this Sunday. Yes. And that's pretty exciting. Yep. You and we are going to receive new members and yes. uh, celebrate Pentecost. Pentecost is so great. If you guys want to wear red, that'd be great. Any colors that oh, show I'll fire. To, I'll have to take a picture of all of us outside with our red on. That would be neat. That would be good. We could, we could do that. Uh, at the, I don't know, at the beginning of the service and we get people out of their cars and if it's not raining. Yeah, that's the so big clue, isn't that, it? That's the big thing. So, Pentecost, the birth of the church, and that's what we're going to be celebrating, plus taking in new members, which is always exciting. It's the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, and this has been the Easter season all these last seven weeks. That's why our Easter sign uh, saying uh, blessed Easter Christ lives has been up there for these seven weeks because Easter is not over until you celebrate Pentecost and that's what's been you know the, the times of the church year uh, are really you know quite laid out so well I will say that during this pandemic those church seasons have become much more noticeable to me because that's the only thing right. that you mark time with. Yes, yes. Otherwise, every week was the same. Yeah. So it's quite, quite a special day to celebrate like that. I'll tell you what, those little bits take a while. Oh, you just, you're just hungry. Now, are you going to... Stick a thing in there and take their temperature? No, because they're going to go in the oven. Oh, okay. And besides, Erin isn't here <laughs> to inspect my work. <laughs> in case they don't know, your daughter is quite the affectionado with the... Uh, yeah, with the FDA. Yes, with the FDA. And chicken is one of, was one of her specialties. That's right. That is correct. And I tell you what, another thing we want to say is congratulations to uh, our graduates. We mentioned them this last Sunday and uh, mentioned uh, members of uh, family members that graduated also. <laughs> but uh, what a joyous time that is. Well, while she's still doing this, I'm going to read something for you uh, as we think about spring, because spring is definitely here. But I love this story by Joyce Rupp, and it's called Slow Greening. Um, and again, that's what I love about spring, because it's the transition time between that cold winter and then the, the hot summer. And this is what she says. I remember many spring times when I'd awaken in the morning, look out the window, and zap. There this green grass would be. Robust, vibrant grass. It seemed like it was an overnight kind of thing. Brown one day and bright green the next. This greening always came in the spring times when we had drenching rain. One year, however, we had very little rain and many more cold days than usual. That sounds like that this. sounds like this year. Now, we've been, we haven't had very little rain, but we've had many more cold days than usual. <coughs> Each day, I looked with hope, expecting to find fresh green pushing its way through the drab, wintered spears of dryness. But each day I saw instead the same dull color before me. When I looked closely, however, I could perceive little hints of new life and a slight changing in the color of the lawn. I could almost feel the earth straining, trying to draw forth new life from within it. I knew the green would come again, that it would just be a matter of time before warmth and moisture provided the right conditions for change and growth. Eventually, 
the rain did return, but not until I had waited a long time for rain to come and drench the land. This process of the earth's greening after a long winter reminds me of our spiritual eastering, the inner transformation and rebirthing that comes after we've had a long winter spell of the spirit. The dead brown grass is there for eons in our hearts, or so it seems. No amount of hurry or push or desire can make the green happen any sooner. I think of people I know who are longing for an inner green and are yet in the throes of a spiritual winter. A widow whose husband recently died at a much too early age, a man who is struggling with a new career in midlife and fears his ability to cope with the challenges it requires, the friend whose husband has applied for work far from home and the painful questions it leaves her about what she will do with her own career and friends, a colleague who fell into deep clinical depression and struggles to live through each day with meager energy. Each one needs an Eastering, a bright greening, and oh, how they long for it to come soon. But it may be a painstakingly slow process, a tiny bit of life gradually weaving through the pain and questions. Eastering isn't always a quick step out of the tomb. Sometimes rising from the dead takes a long, slowly greening time. It can't be hurried. It is my hope for you that over this past Easter season, that you have trusted the resurrection of your spirit, that you believe that joy and new life will come for you, even though it may not be there for you now. And if you are one of the fortunate ones whose soul sings with happy hallelujahs this Easter season, may you turn often to those who are still awaiting their greening and walk hopefully with them. I just like that whole concept of a slow greening because if she, and she puts it in the analogy of looking at it as, as it's us, because there are so many times, and especially with what all has happened this past year, that it has slowed our greening. It has slowed our Eastern because we have been separated uh, for so long and have things that could not take place this year due to the pandemic. But now we can see light. We can know that we will, you know, be able to visit again and uh, come back to in-person worship at some point uh, and this summer and then maybe by fall even have uh, the full congregation come back so it's it's just not it's not giving up it's praying for continued health uh, continued vaccines that will uh, hopefully offer herd immunity uh, continuing to just be present with one another however that is whether it's a call or an email and then all will be well. It will be well. So now Marty's going to take it from here. It looks like she's cutting up a lemon. Yes, I'm slicing a half a lemon into thin slices as thin as my knife will allow. Also, I'll be sending out in my next email for your chat, cook, pray people for you to be able to uh, sign up to be one of the 10 people for our... Be careful. I am being careful. Okay. That's the scary part, isn't it? Yes. You got a little hat there. Yeah, I know. Okay, now. Okay, you were telling us about. Oh, yes, the we're going to be people. one of the 10 people that will be able to join us for a live performance, performance, a live uh, cooking show. And you will be served a handheld lunch that day, a very small little lunch, but it will be a special recipe that I'm not going to tell you about ahead of time this time because I want it to be a total surprise, surprise. to those coming. Surprise! Yes, and I, but I will tell you, it's just, it's something that I liked. 
So. Okay, so what is the actual date of that? Do you know? That is the 8th of June. The 8th of June. And we just will limit it to the first 10 who respond. Okay. And you'll be socially distanced here. We will ask you to wear a mask, depending on how things are. We just don't know at this time. We don't know what's happening. Right. But, uh, so now I'm going to put garlic in. And instead of, you, I just used some powdered garlic this time. I got lazy. <laughs> I got lazy this morning and I didn't cut up any garlic. So lemon, oh, so far you just sprinkled garlic in there, right? Right, just sprinkled the garlic. Okay. And I'm just gonna. And this is in the drippings from the chicken. Right, and I'm just kind of stirring that in a little bit here. And then I'm going to add, this probably doesn't look like chicken broth to you, but it will soon because I will add my packet of instant no chicken sodium broth. chicken broth. Chicken from Urbox. My favorite little group. I thought Pinsy's just, was your favorite little group. Well, from Pinsy's doesn't make Urbox. Oh, okay. They don't have the <laughs> salt free sense. they don't have the salt free chicken broth. Oh, I see. And uh, so anyway, this is uh, just getting rid of all those little brown bits in there. Got them all and then uh, I'm going to stir in the lemon slices to this. Okay. Uh, you don't need to go in there. You're kind of wimpy. Well, that was a cute little hat. You could have put it on top of one of our bottle bits. I didn't want to sully our hats. Sully yes. our hats? Yes. I didn't want to sully them. Okay. This is heating up here. We're just going to cook this until it's reduced to about two thirds of a cup. And actually, let me see when I put the lemon juice in. Lemon slices and bring it to a boil. Da, 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 da. And then after that boils some, I'll add my lemon juice, my fourth of a cup of lemon juice. Okay, so was this from this same lemon you got the juice, or was that a fresh lemon? It was from, from a different. Slice? You it didn't was from the, other... the lemon first and then slice it up? No, I okay. put the whole the sliced lemon in, and then I had juice that I already okay. had done from another lemon. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Can you smell that? Not yet. Well, if you move closer, you could. Well, I don't want to put my head in there. Well, <laughs> it might be an improvement. <laughs> oh. I'm going to wait for the final The final hurrah. Dish. Hurrah. Well, this lemon dish. slices kind of... When I cooked it the other day at home, I really... I cooked those lemon slices really cooked. They were quite, uh, you couldn't recognize them as Were they lemon. crispy? No, they oh. were melted. Oh. That's the best way. You couldn't tell. It looked like maybe sliced onions in there, but it was the lemon rind. Oh, mm. wow. Mm. So they're reducing. Yes, they're reducing. And I also have some white wine that I'm going to add in. Okay. Because that really makes it special. I bet. So are the capers the last thing you put in? Well, I need to read the recipe and see. Okay. Oh, uh, my capers. Uh, okay, it's melted. Okay, the sauce is thickened. Huh, where did I put the capers? Lemon juice and capers. Oh, I had the lemon juice and capers at, at the, the same, same time. time. Okay. And I have these, I rinsed them. It's just two tablespoons of capers that I have rinsed and drained off. Okay. And uh, we're getting close to where I can pour the, the stuff in here because it's cooking down nicely. You know, when I filled this up to the cup, it was the one cup is up to here. Well, right. as I came back, I kind of sloshed some and I dropped it on our sign. Well, so I picked the sign up to throw the water in the trash can, forgetting that I'd moved the trash can to this side of the table and I threw the water all over the floor. So then I had to wipe the floor up. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. Don't, how... don't uh, share our secrets here. Well, and then I tried throwing some trash in there and realized that I just threw it on the floor. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add the lemon juice in and the capers. Oh, now I'm starting, I can start to smell. Yeah, wow. Yes, smell of vision would be a good thing. Yes, it would be. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so this is the sauce. 
This is the sauce. So when the chicken tenders are done, you take them and place them on a plate and pour the sauce over them? Yes, that's wow. what I did. And I have some noodles that I have cooked, which were oh, okay. closer so to... Oh, okay, so you can add noodles, but... Yeah, I added put the noodles on a plate and served the chicken, because I thought, I know you, you want some starch with yours. Hey, I do not need it. I could just eat the chicken. Chicken I is know, but then thing. you would have been over there going, you know, it would really taste good with some noodles or some... <laughs> Or, you know, some pasta, or maybe some mashed potatoes. You know, this would be really good with that. And I couldn't decide if I wanted to do um, orzo or noodles, but I decided that with our limited ability to get rid of water and different things, yes. that doing noodles, they were bigger yes. pieces. Okay. okay. And now when this is cooks down some, now I'm going to add in, I'm going to go ahead and add in the wine. White wine. Mm, Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Well, what's neat is, this is kind of one of those, it's almost a fancy dish that's easy. That's easy, and it really doesn't cost much to make. Your most expensive thing per ounce would be the lemon uh -huh. versus... The chicken even, what I mean, that was And like, it, it would yeah. look uh, fancy and maybe take a little longer if it was the split butterfly chicken breasts. Well, actually, you, know. you want the you want them thin sliced, which is what I was going to buy were the thin sliced ones. Oh, okay. But they don't gone. They sold out of them before I got over there. I well, should have gone. I wonder gone. if there's a run on chicken piccata. Well, no. <laughs> you know, they probably were run on people trying to watch their weight after this pandemic. Yeah, that could be. And they probably wanted to. Now I need to let this cook down some. And then I'm going to put butter in. Butter. Butter. How Which much? Oh, it says to put in three tablespoons, but I think okay. I put in a little more the last time because I put in the wine. And because you can't have too much butter? That's kind of my thought. <laughs> You know how we feel about butter around yeah. here. Yes, we do. All right. Mm. Well, see, I'm enjoying this because because we are, we're filming it the way we are because it's... Now you can watch the tape. show while I'm... I'm watching <laughs> you on the screen uh -huh. and seeing you do your well, little shifts. I'll, I'll tell you what's really freaky. Now, this is just really freaky. And that is because since we've moved our set around some... As I'm cooking, I can watch myself in the mirror in the, in the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just really... Well, and see, you could too before we had this other Windows backdrop. We yes. didn't have this always. No, but, you know, it was kind of yucky without our backdrop. Now we have this beautiful, beautiful setting outside. area. Yes. Yeah, we have this beautiful little uh, kitchenette area, our little dining area. Yes. and And we could make it a living room or right. whatever. Right. And you know, it's been amazing how many people think this is real. I know. That's I know. scary. It took us a long time to build those cabinets. It did, and to paint them and just right. And to paint right. them blue. And blue, and get that's the That's right, and get them. it just right. Yeah. That's right. But I I like this one because it reminded me of it. And I've always French wanted kitchen. to use that toaster, but we've never had an opportunity. <laughs> <You know? laughs> see the yeah, toaster? I see the toaster. It looks it, like it's also made for bagels. Cause it's well, got that wider, could be, yeah. Wider slots in it. Wide slice. Well, yes. it's getting close here, I think, actually. Well, it's still not as thick as, as I would like. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. But it, it is amazing, the smell. So you have actually, you got all the ingredients in there that you need. Yes. Okay. Is yes, good? it's definitely tart. That's why the butter needs to be in there, too. Oh, okay, so the butter isn't in there yet. No, it's not in there yet, because I need to wait and do it at the... And then I'll do a... At the very end, I'll do... Instead of fresh parsley, I mean... Yeah. You know, that comes in such a big bunch, and I'm not sure how you use all that stuff up, unless you're Lebanese, and then you make this salad type of thing that is all... All parsley? It's parsley and tomatoes and, and it's very good but man you have to eat it all at once because you know I mean it just right. parsley just fresh parsley just doesn't doesn't right. do that well 
So if you turn it up hotter, will it do it? It's quicker? all the way up. Oh, okay. I did that. I see. I decided that would be a good plan. Yeah. Once again, because we're kind of in a uh, a state of because it cooks faster if you have a burner on the stove. Uh huh. We kind of are limited here with our outlet plan. <laughs> I don't know you why. Know what? It, it, it hasn't bothered us too much. No, we've, we've been able to figure it out, but yes. we ran out of extension cords was our problem this time. Yes. Because they don't make these really long extension cords for electric skillets and hot plates and for air fryers. I guess they're afraid cooks would trip over them in their kitchens. That's and, right. That's right. But I've got to say, this, uh, this kitchen has served us well. Yes, it has. You know, you think about how we started it yes. last year when we we did our first backdrop was the Hawaiian one. That's right, that we hung up on the bookshelf. Yeah, yeah the plastic one, and then we or did. Or was it the first one the Mexican uh, because it was Cinco de Mayo? No, we did. Well, it was. We did Cinco de Mayo, yeah, but we did the Hawaiian back. It was a Hawaiian backdrop, but we used it for everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was the Hawaiian plastic backdrop. I was thinking of mine, we had like parrots and we had... Yeah, they were on birds. the same thing. Oh, <laughs> they were okay. On the same. They were in Hawaii at the time. They were in Hawaii. Okay. They they went there to celebrate oh. Cinco de Mayo, Cinco de Mayo. That's right. with the natives. That's right. So here we are now with our French. And how apropos that we built a French kitchen since most of my language uh, Skills? stumblings have been with the French words that you find. See, it just shows you how much cooking is French mm -hmm. or has or have what we started choose. in French or what we use at least. Of course. Mostly French and Italian. Yes, that's a lot. And then we had, of course, the uh, tagine, tagine, which tagine. was, what is that? Moroccan. Moroccan, right. Okay, there goes the butter. And I didn't bother to cut it up into yeah. chunks before I dropped it in. She's melting the butter. I think that will soften up the flavor some. Because it's a little strong. That lemon juice was pretty strong. Oh, yes. Oh. Now, I'll give you a task. Okay, what? Would you drain off the noodles? And it's got a strainer yes. on the, the lid. So. On the lid. So I just take it to the sink in the bathroom? Yes. Okay. Here, you I can shall reach it do that. Right oh. down there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Straining the noodles. Oh, yes. Much better. Yeah, this is uh, normally it would thicken up a little more than this one has, and I think part of it is my skillet temperature isn't as high as I would like, but we're adapting. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a little more garlic to it. I think it could use it. And then we'll add in the parsley. Noodles have been strained. Thank you. Man, that smells good. Yummy. This is looking better now. Let's see how it oh, yes. Okay. Now I'm going to take the chicken out. And I'm going to it's first close. First I'm it's going to So she 
scoops the noodles. I better only take that many. Okay. I don't want to not enjoy my Overdo meal. Overdo your esophagus. I don't want to not enjoy my meal. Right. I'm learning. I'm a little slow learner, but I'm learning. Okay. Chicken is in the We'll just put the chicken on the on the noodles. On the noodles. And you can always have seconds. We have yeah, that's fine. Right, that's fine. We have twenty. Wow. Yeah, that sauce smells great. It does. Oh, I tell you what. When we're chatting, you all will have to tell me if you were making it as we Oh, yes. Made Look it. at that oh. sauce. Just oh, hold that up so they can see that. I don't know if they can okay, see. Look and see if you can see it. Uh, no, I can't. Okay. Uh, so I need, here, here, there. I can lift this up. There's, put it down, put the pan down so I can get more of the sauce. There it is. Okay. All right. Now, do you want any lemon on yours? The... Oh, sure. Okay. Just, that'll be, it'll be pretty. Yeah. Pretty. Come here, little lemon slice. And so once you get the sauce on there, I'm going to show my plate. Oh, wow. That looks terrific -o. Okay, let me get this. Okay, now I've got to see how it looks when I put it up there. Oh, you all, look at that. There you go. Chicken Takata. There it is. It's quite lovely. And it smells wonderful okay here i'll take yours all then right you can then you go get a seat and i'll turn the, the camera. camera yummy can you get us mm-hmm okay a second, I'll lower this down a little bit. Oh, I need to get our little trims over here. Oh, yeah, our bobbleheads. Oh, now they'll make. Let me see if they'll sit right there. I think they will. They're, there they're they in are. the garden. Yes, they are. They're in the they're garden. Blooming idiots. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> blooming idiots. Oh, we got to say a prayer. Yep, very good. See, I remember now. Mm -hmm. Gracious and loving God, we ask that you pour out your blessing on this food. We ask you that as we are showing this today, uh, Marty is probably finished with her procedure and hopefully oh, hope recovering, so. and that all went well. Um, and maybe I'll know that to be able to share on chat but I just know that she's receiving many prayers from all of you and, and of Bethel. And we just ask that uh, we use this food to your good works. In all these things we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Here's the test. You get a noodle, a caper, a little bit of lemon, Come on out of here, Lemon. And I'm going to... Mm-mm-mm. That is so good. Isn't that? Yes. And it's just simple little ingredients. It is so good. Mm. But how can you go bad with butter and wine? No, that's it. <laughs>
Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that was not listed in the recipe, but I'll make a note when I send it out that to add a that they could add wine if they'd like to. It kind of softens the the lemon. You no, know, and you can kind kind of taste it. Mm hmm. Mm. But capers, man, oh, you love capers. I love them. They have this unique flavor. I had never really used them until Chet cooked Prey, and then you like them, so. Mmm. So good. So, you know, one thing I've noticed even after a year of this show, I still talk with my mouth full. I think you've been practicing more on it than ever. I think it's most noticeable when you get up and look in the camera real close. And well, yeah, talking. <laughs> and, and there's stuff falling out of your mouth. <laughs> That'll do it. Now, is your chicken done? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Very. It's good. Mm mm mm. Well, we have flat covered some recipes. Yes, That's we have. That's for sure. Hmm. Now, I need to tell them also that I post, I also post our videos on YouTube, and I have just discovered a way to actually include the recipe on our YouTube description. So, if you ever need the recipe, I'm going to be going back and adding it into all of our previous uh, videos when I have time. Yeah, I was going to say, good luck with that. But the minestrone, I put the recipe in for it, and I did it today. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I'm glad you like this. I do. It's a well, and what I like is. It's a light taste, mm -hmm. but yet you can tell if if you eat, you know, like if I eat the full dish of this, which I will, that it, it will be filling. Mm -hmm. It'd be a good uh, summer dish, actually. Yes. It's a, a kind of a fancy, light summer dish. You know, if you had mm -hmm. somebody over and you're eating out on the deck or something, it's got that... Uh, I don't know, some kind of, I need an Italian or a French saying. You're but so good with those languages. I know. Mm. I must say, I've never cooked so many different types of dishes in my life. <laughs> but Probably. you you have been cooking and entertaining for Yes, but a usually long time. I cook the same you know, kind of have a, a set routine. Mm -hmm. Well, because when you're cooking for a large group. For a large group, group yeah. Yeah, you know, like 25, 30 people. Right. You know, you and you don't want to be cooking the whole time they're there. You have a routine set up. And I have like five crock pots. And I have a big roasting thing. I mean, I have lots of things. You have lots of cooking things. You've added to that yes, and I don't during know this I'm, show. <laughs> I know. Mm. See, it kind of needed the noodles, I think. Yeah, I think the noodles give, I mean, I, or I wonder if, if it would be good, good over rice. Or, I thought about that. You know, that um, would be another uh, option. I thought about rice because I've got the package of Uncle Ben's. Uh -huh. But I thought, well, but I wasn't sure. I do think you'd have to put it over something. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought potatoes would be a little too heavy. Yeah, I think so too. And that's why I thought that orzo, orzo would be really good. Yeah. You can make it like a risotto underneath. Right. What is polenta? Is that corn? Mm hmm I wonder if that would be any good. Yeah, there was a oh. recipe that had polenta. The, but that's more Spanish. Polenta came from Spain. Well, you know, we are just these world... And, you, you know... 
since you're Castellan, your language, the Castile language, I haven't challenged you with any of that yet. Maybe I should have. <laughs> yeah. You can't challenge me long, girl. Challenge times are getting short. Well, I don't know. You're not changing your address, and I've got the mailman can deliver stuff to you. <laughs> But say, anyway, well, the reading I've already done, yes. so I I do not have that, and the food is just about gone, mm -hmm. so we're going to say adios, and of course, uh, uh, you will know uh, soon, maybe even during this program, how Marty's doing, and it's just amazing to me. She will do anything she has to do to make sure <laughs> that you're that, fed, that you're fed <laughs> and that Chat, Cook, and Pray is <coughs> online on Tuesdays at 1, no matter what. So, on that note, we are going to send you off with our kazoos. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> turn us off because the last <laughs> time I couldn't find where to do it. Then keep waving. <laughs> keep waving. I'm waving. Bye-bye. <laughs>